When I first bought my Kindle, I didn't really do any research for any competitors out there, but I recently discovered the Kobo ecosystem, and I've been blown away at the experience. To give you a quick summary up front, the Kobo user experience is actually amazing, and I really prefer it over the Kindle, but there are a few key things that Kobo is missing that's preventing me from switching over completely. In this video, I'll be going through all the differences between the Kobo and the Kindle ecosystem and telling you all the things you have to know before you buy one. Now, one quick disclaimer, I won't be doing any information right now on hardware. I have all the Kindles and Kobos right over here, but this video is strictly talking about the software experience between the two. Let's jump into it. Hi there, Rai Gurji Ga Khalsa, Rai Gurji Ki Fateh. My name is Manith Bal Singh. On this channel, we talk about tech and getting things done. Let's talk about the comparison now between the Kindle and the Kobo ecosystems. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is the overall UI across both the Kindle and the Kobo. I have to say, I really prefer the Kobo when it comes to overall organization and where things are listed out. For example, at the bottom over here on the Kobo, you have all the different tabs for the most important things you'll be using, like the My Book section. And on top of that, in the My Book section, you can actually organize all your books by author, by title, by collection, by series. You can't do this on the Kindle. On the Kindle, you have to use filters, which the Kobo has as well, but it's not nearly as user-friendly as the Kobo. The settings menu on the Kobo is actually a lot easier as well. On the Kindle, there's settings just all over the place. When you're reading a book, there's settings over there. On the top menu bar, there's settings over there. There's actually an all settings button with more settings in there. And then in that menu, there are some menus with more settings. On the Kobo, you do have settings while you're reading a book, but every other setting is basically all in the one place for the settings menu, there's no other place to go besides this one list. And I actually prefer the way they organize this list too. It's not really ambiguous what you're clicking on or tapping on. On the Kindle, you sometimes forget where certain settings are. On the Kobo, it makes a lot more sense. One setting specifically that I really enjoyed on the Kobo is the ability to adjust brightness by sliding your finger up and down on the left side of the screen while reading a book. Normally, you have to go into the settings menu on the top on the Kindle to adjust brightness up and down using the sliders over here. But on the Kobo, you can do this on the fly without opening up the settings. This is the one setting that most people use more than the other settings, so I really enjoyed that feature. Now, another really small thing I enjoy on the Kobo that most people will probably not care about, but something I really enjoy, is when I put the Kobo in sleep mode for the first time, it just looked so nice. The whole screen went blank and it just said sleeping on the screen. It looks so sleek and cool. I really liked that small little feature. On the Kindle, if you have one, you know that it goes into like a wallpaper with the sleep mode, which is fine, looks just fine, nothing wrong with that. But on the Kobo, it's really refreshing to see a blank screen. It just says sleeping on it. It's really nice to see that. They actually take that one step further though, and if you're reading a book and put the Kobo into sleep mode, it'll actually show you the book cover, so it feels much more like reading a normal book Whereas on the Kindle, you have to unlock the Kindle to see the book that you were reading before. On the Kobo, before you even open the Kobo up for unlocking sleep mode, you see the book that you're reading before you put it to sleep. And that's just a really small little touch that I actually enjoy quite a bit. One more thing to note about sleep mode is on the Kindle, you really have to buy the option without advertisements if you want that clean wallpaper while the Kindle is sleeping. If you don't buy that upgraded version for 20 bucks more, you have advertisements on the sleep mode wallpaper and you have to swipe to unlock when you unlock sleep mode. That's one thing I find really annoying on the Kindle, unless you buy the higher model without the ads. On the Kobo, there is no ads or anything like that. You just buy the one version of the Kobo and you're set to go. Now while actually reading books, the Kindle and the Kobo show very similar information. Things like time left in chapter, time left in the book, what page you're on. You can enable or disable all of these if you want in the settings. But the one thing I like about the Kobo over the Kindle is it actually push the information up on the top and the bottom, whereas on the Kindle, all the information shows at the bottom. And the Kobo actually does this one step better as well. They add a progress bar across the bottom of the screen so you can see how much progress you've made through the whole book. On the Kindle, there's no progress bar. All you get is the percentage completion 
through the whole book and I always struggle with knowing how much I have left in the book. Yeah, a percentage is very helpful to know, but having that visual progress bar is much more pleasing for me. I'm a much more visual person. I actually like that a lot. Now, my favorite thing on the Kobo is actually not even design related so far. It's actually regarding reading metrics. On the Kindle, if you wanna see the number of books you read or any numbers behind your reading habit, you have to go to the mobile app to see those numbers. You can't see any of your reading metrics on the Kindle itself. On the Kobo though, I can actually see metrics in two places. If I'm reading a book, I can go to the metric section in that one book to see how much time is left in the book in a much more visual metric way. Or if I go to the reading metrics section in the settings, I get a whole dashboard of so many more metrics, things like how many books I've read, the percent of books that I've bought that I've actually completed reading, how many hours I've spent reading. These are all so cool to me and I really love this because it really gamifies the aspect of reading every single day. Again, the Kindle does show a lot of these numbers in the Kindle app on your phone, but I really wish Amazon would put these numbers on the Kindle itself. Having a metrics dashboard really makes you gamify it so much more and having it on your Kindle or on your Kobo encourages you to look at them more and gamify it even more. Now, up until this point, I've been talking about all the things I love about the Kobo and you're probably wondering why do I not just switch over to it if I love it this much. There are a few things that really prevent me from switching over. The first one is the limited number of books available in the Kobo bookstore. I didn't expect this to be an issue. The Kobo store does have a lot of books available, but literally the first book when I got this Kobo that I wanted to buy, it wasn't available on the Kobo store, but it was something I was reading on my Kindle. That was a very, very big deal breaker for me. Again, maybe it just got bad luck for me. The one book that I wanted to buy wasn't available, but I see this being a problem if I can't buy the books I wanna read. The Kobo does make up for this in other ways. It does support a lot of other book formats like EPUBs and other things you can download on the web and just send them to your Kobo where the Kindle is much more locked down. You have to use the Kindle bookstore to get the majority of the books or use PDFs. The Kobo is much more flexible in that regard. I should also say the Kobo is really meant for users outside of America. In the US, the Kindle has a dominant market share for reading and books. There's just so much more in the Kindle store you can get. But in Canada, for example, the Kobo is a much more practical option. It connects with local libraries through OverDrive and you have so much more flexibility for that. So again, it really depends on where you're located. In America though, the Kindle is probably a better option all around for books. Now putting the whole bookstore thing aside, let's say I didn't care about that and the majority of the books I want to get are available on the Kobo store. Fine, that's okay. The other major deal breaker though for me, and I've talked about this in length in my other videos, is I love using Readwise to connect my highlights into my Notion and also email myself my daily highlights. Don't get me wrong, the Kobo does have highlighting and note-taking features just like the Kindle. Very, very cool. I actually prefer the way it looks on the Kobo. They have little handles to drag the highlights back and forth, where on the Kindle you're kind of stuck with your finger. So the design aspect again is really good on the Kobo, but there's no way to sync these highlights to Readwise, and Readwise right now is the gold standard for syncing all your notes from all these devices and sources into Notion. If you're into Notion and building a second brain and having these highlights come to you through email, you're gonna wanna use Readwise. And as of right now, apparently it's just not physically possible for Readwise to sync over the highlights from Kobo. They have a whole support question on this on their website. And I found that to be a huge deal breaker. And if it wasn't for that, I actually might have tried using the Kobo as my primary device, but because of that, I really can't switch over 100%. Now, if you enjoyed this comparison between the Kindle and the Kobo, definitely stay tuned. A bunch more review videos coming out in the coming weeks. But for right now, I definitely wanna recommend my video comparing physical books to Kindles, which are just e-readers. I did a whole video last year talking about why you should switch to an e-reader compared to reading physical books. Check that video out, link on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time.